Hey guys, Dr. Bobby here, your board certified anesthesiologist. Listen, I know my last video probably was a little bit long, a little bit more informational, but I want to sort of vary things a lot here. I want you to feel like you're going to get to know me a little bit more as a person and get to know my personality a little bit more. So I'm going to strive to try to make the videos a little bit more engaging. And in today's video, certainly a lot more informal and a lot more information about why I'm doing this channel and my motivation for actually even coming to you in terms of bringing content. So listen, I'm telling you, it seems really easy to do YouTube, but when you look into this camera, and you have to think about all the people that are out there. It's really hard to become engaging. Your mind gets really clouded and you don't even know really how to say things. So look, just bear with me. I'm going to try to continue to breathe and to get a little bit more comfortable in front of the camera. And listen, take an opportunity, like, share and subscribe this video. Um, otherwise, leave me a comment below and let's just have a conversation. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Peace. Hey guys, I'm on call today and I had a little bit of time, so I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Obviously, I want you to get to know me a little bit better, but I also have the opportunity to give back and whenever I can, I try to do that. One of my good friends from college, her name is Janice Knox. She is a sixth grade teacher at the Young Women's STEAM Academy in Texas. I'd like to shout her out because she gave me the opportunity to answer questions that were given to her by her sixth grade students. So we're gonna take some questions and uh, see where this takes us. All right, our first question is coming from Jacqueline. She is a student in Miss Knox's class. And she wanted to know, I would like to know if you have uh, ever not wanted to care for a patient because you were afraid of becoming infected? Jacqueline, thank you so much for the question. To answer your question, the short answer is no. I'm never afraid or not wanting to take care of a patient because I have a risk of becoming infected. Uh, with information comes power. So we learn in medical school and we learn in our training that we do what we call universal precautions to decrease the risk of becoming infected. So we treat every patient as if they potentially had an infection. So we do things to decrease the risk that we would either communicate infections to them or that they would give us infection. So we wash our hands very well, we wear gloves, we wear masks, we uh, do all of these sorts of things to decrease the risk that we would give them something and they would give us something. So no, I am not afraid of taking care of patients because I'm afraid of becoming infected. I hope that answers your question. Our next question comes from Emily. Emily is also in Ms. Knox's class and she asks, is it hard and stressful to be a doctor? Emily, thank you so much for the question. And to be completely honest with you, sometimes, yes, it is hard. And it is very stressful to be a doctor. In my specialty, particularly in anesthesiology, we are uh, sort of thrust in a lot of traumatic and very urgent and what we call emergency types of procedures and situations. So you have to have your wits about you and you have to be able to put those feelings to the side to be able to get the job done, which means to be able to help the patient. So I would say that, you know, if anything in your life is not a little bit hard or requires a little bit more effort than you know it's not worth doing so with that being said the uh, fact that medicine is hard and stressful are not things that um, have decreased my desire or my happiness in being able to do it but you know it does have its fair share of being hard and stressful I hope that answers your question Emily all right, our next question comes from Jasmine. Jasmine is in Mrs. St. Clair's class. She asks, what is the hardest part of being a doctor? Jasmine, thank you so much for the question. Well, you know, there are, I don't really sort of think about doing medicine in terms of it being hard. I think about there being somewhat of difficulties involved in doing my job. And I would say a huge part of that stems from the emotional aspects of our job. So we are dealing with people who are in lots of pain, people who are anxious, people who are afraid, and we have to be able to separate those feelings from being able to take care of them. So sometimes the human part of us wants to uh, get inside of our feelings, but the uh, doctor part of us has to take control and be able to do what's in the best 
needs for that person. So sometimes that can be hard. The other sort of difficult aspect of this job stems around uh, the amount of hours that we have to work sometimes. So that means that we can't see our family or or go to see our families uh, as much. But small price to pay to be able to uh, take care of people and to be able to do good work for people. I hope that answers your question, Jasmine. All right, our next question is from Monserrat. Monserrat is in Ms. Murphy's class, and Monserrat wanted to know how many years it takes to be a doctor. Thank you so much for the question. I will say that it takes a long time to become a doctor. Uh, particularly, uh, it takes a long time at the high school. So typically, in order to become a doctor, you have to first finish the sixth grade. <laughs> and after the sixth grade, you have to go through the rest of high school. You'll be done uh, in the 12th grade, and then you have to go to college. So you have to go to college for four years, and then following college, you have to go to medical school to become a doctor for another four years. And then uh, you have to do what we call residency, which is specialized training in a particular part of medicine. So whatever type of doctor you want to be, you have to do a certain number of years of training uh, in order to be deemed as an expert in that particular specialty. For me, and as an anesthesiologist, that took an additional four years. So if you add it up, four years of college, four years of medical school, and then another four years of residency. So that took me 12 years after high school. So with that being said, it does take a long time, but is it worth it? If you really wanna do this, absolutely it is. I hope that answers your question. All right, our next question comes from Camilla. Camilla is in Miss Murphy's class. Camilla wants to know, what's your favorite part of your job? So. I have a lot of favorite parts of my job as an anesthesiologist. My first uh, favorite thing about being an anesthesiologist is knowing that I have the ability to take away people's pain. Um, in anesthesiology, we do lots of things for people, but one of those is to alleviate pain. And so to be able to do that for someone, they're super, super grateful. And um, that's a really great thing. Another thing I really like about doing anesthesiology is it gives me an opportunity to take care of a bunch of different age ranges of patients. So I take care of really, really, really young children and I take care of really, really, really old adults. And more importantly, I think the biggest thing that I enjoy about doing anesthesiology is that I have the opportunity and the ability to to save people's lives and to really um, get in the thick of things if they're unstable and to basically be able to uh, keep them alive and uh, you know that is one of the most gratifying things uh, about this job and I say another big gratifying thing about this job is the idea that I'm able to connect with people in such a way that they trust me with their life um, on a daily basis so uh, I don't take that lightly and that is both something that I fervently enjoy about doing my job, but it's something that's also I recognize to be a privilege. I hope that answers your question. Our next question comes from Helen. Helen is in Mrs. Knox's class and she wanted to know how many times that I want to give up. <laughs> Helen, thank you so much for this question and I have to tell you this is a really, really good question and this will apply to you and your classmates in many different aspects of your life. To answer that question, there are so many times I wanted to give up during this process. Like I said, Earlier, it takes 12 years to become a doctor and you have to sacrifice a lot of your uh, time and a lot of the social life that you would otherwise be able to have in order to achieve this type of a dream. So I would say there are many times, there are many aspects of this job that are very difficult. Uh, but the thing that kept me from wanting to really quit is to know that this is something that I really wanted to do since I was uh, younger than you are now. And uh, because this was something that I felt uh, called to do, I had to get it done. So to be able to have that determination to continue is, is all you can hope for. So I'd like to encourage you and all of your classmates that, uh, to know that even if things get hard, you uh, go through it and you continue to go. All right, our next question comes from Wendy. Wendy is a student of Mrs. St. Clair, and Wendy wants to know, what has been the most difficult thing for you being a physician? Well, Wendy, 
I'd probably say the most difficult part of being a doctor and more specifically an anesthesiologist is dealing probably with the emotional aspects of when people die. And obviously you're at an age where you understand what death is, but there's a lot of emotions that come when you have to explain to someone that their family member didn't make it. So I would say uh, the biggest and probably most difficult part of this job would have to be when you have to relate to people that their family member didn't make it. I'd say another big difficult part of this job is just sometimes the time. Because we are a heavily uh, busy specialty, there are times when we have to work long hours. And so I would say at times that can also be uh, pretty difficult. But notwithstanding, telling people that they're, lo they're losing or have lost a family member is probably the most difficult thing that I've had to do or that and that I continue to have to do in this specialty. I hope that answers your question. All right, listen, I'd like to thank Miss Knox for the opportunity to talk with you guys today. And I'd like to shout out all the students at Young Women's STEAM Academy. You guys are great. You asked some very insightful questions and I'm so privileged to have had the opportunity to be able to answer them. Now, please, please, please make sure you continue to practice your social distancing and make sure that you're washing your hands and yet you're doing your part to ensure that we stop the spread of the coronavirus. Please make sure that you stay productive and know that you can achieve all that you set forth to. You guys have a great day. Bye.